Hello. We're going to start this uh, second event of the Romanian Pavilion, uh, the Romanian presence in the Biennale Denny Architectura 2021. Uh, welcome here in the Romanian Cultural Institute and Humanistic Research in Venice. Uh, my name is Stefan Simeon, and together with uh, my colleagues in America, Stefania Cardata, Radu Tepe, and Cristi Bădescu, we are uh, the team poster architects who are the curators of uh, this uh, Romanian presence in Biennale. Uh, uh, we are welcoming you today in uh, the new gallery uh, of uh, the Romanian Cultural Institute in Venice. And um, this is uh, uh, the exhibition uh, part of the Biennale outside of Giardini. Uh, which marks uh, the Romanian presence. While uh, in uh, Giardini, their, uh, their main family pavilion uh, named Fading Borders presents uh, two in-depth research on migration, uh, where we have invited as curators uh, the team Tellelo, uh, formed by journalist Elena Stankoi Cosim Woods, who documented the diaspora uh, of the uh, Romanian diaspora in Europe. And on the other side, uh, being uh, having invited the team Idei Lagram, led by Ilinka Popo-Santinescu, who have uh, uh, researched uh, shrinking cities in Romania, a uh, very also in-depth academic uh, survey on the uh, cities that uh, contract and uh, that are being left behind uh, in Romania. Um, I want to say before starting uh, uh, this uh, this book launch, this magazine launch, uh, that uh, the Romanian presence is uh, organized by the Romanian Ministry of Culture, by the Romanian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Romanian Cultural Institute, and the uh, Union of Romanian Architects, and the curate, the commissioner is Attila Kim, who is also present here. Uh, we also uh, salute uh, the presence of uh, Professor Arbolet, the director of uh, the Romanian Cultural Institute and Humanistic Research here. And uh, uh, we are going to, to talk uh, now a little about uh, this uh, uh, magazine, the seventh, the seventh issue of Matsokia magazine, our magazine, um, which has been, again, I want to say this in the beginning, which has been published with the support of the Order of Architects in Romania. And uh, uh, also, uh, the Romanian presence has been uh, supported here in Venice by uh, Unicredit and by Forte Partners. Uh, I'm going to say a few words about the content, about the, the format of our magazine, and then uh, uh, we're going to I'm going to give the words to uh, our friend uh, Gurea Badescu, who is a researcher in the uh, University of Constant and also in Germany, and also in um, Senator Pea. And he's actually leading uh, his research, his main, one of his main focuses is on the cities welcoming migrants, and uh, he's going to mention that also. And then uh, my uh, uh, co-curator, my colleague, uh, Stefania Hrilatzer, will uh, say a few words. So. Um, uh, a very brief uh, idea is that while in Giardini uh, the Armenian presence brings into focus the, the, the drama of migration, 
and its uh, complex uh, implications. Uh, here in uh, Matokyo magazine and in this uh, intimate exhibition, we we are trying to open up the uh, a space for imagination when talking about migration. Uh, of course, in the context of uh, architects, uh, of circulating architects, of uh, architecture and the city. Uh, the format of our magazine that is that we address polemic questions to architects and professors uh, from all around the world. Uh, in this uh, issue, um, we have uh, sent the question, how will migration influence architecture in the city, to 17 architects, uh, four from Romania and uh, the others being from uh, United Kingdom, uh, Germany, Switzerland, uh, uh, United States, uh, South America, and also, uh, uh, well, uh, our friend from uh, Holland and uh, India, uh, Robert Weiss, just to, to say a name, who is, uh, because he's uh, an architect living in two continents, two, two cultures. Um, the magazine presents their, uh, their answers uh, on this, uh, on this uh, question, short answers, polemic. Uh, it's just uh, like a seat that opens up debate and that uh, proposes a, a certain viewpoint on this uh, idea of uh, circulating the globe, of uh, differences between places and between uh, architectures. Um, uh, the uh, magazine also contains uh, uh, two uh, short texts in dialogue from uh, the main exhibitors in uh, Giardini. Uh, yeah. A text by Elena Stanko and by Irina Capo and Constantinescu. So it's like a dialogue between them. And um, our uh, curatorial text uh, that um, uh, tries to, to uh, again, maybe I'm overusing this word polemically, uh, tries to propose a series of themes when coming to the discussion of, uh, about migration. As architects, uh, we cannot not think about, uh, uh, for example, uh, that we're thinking about the three uh, maybe most uh, acclaimed architects in uh, mainstream uh, history of architecture who were migrants themselves. And, uh, for example, Ms. van der Rohe, uh, we were thinking to the differences uh, in his architecture while he was in Germany and then how his architecture changed when he got to the United States. And uh, one of the beautiful answers is uh, Ryan, Ryan Kenihan's answer from, uh, from Ireland uh, that talks about this uh, uh, new, new vantage point when you go from one place to another and uh, cultures uh, meet and uh, you have a, a, a fresh perspective on things. Um, here there are answers about uh, public space. For example, the, the, the answer from Jeanette Po, who talks about the importance of public space as a, uh, a welcoming and uh, important uh, instrument when coming to the circulation of people. Um, uh, there are also uh, uh, talks about uh, this length of uh, th this long duration of architecture and of course of, of the long duration of uh, of uh, people as uh, as uh, walking around our planet and uh, this cross uh, reference that produced uh, our culture and uh, uh, right now I'm also looking in the exhibition where we have. Uh, uh, displayed their answers uh, to uh, a young team from Italy, Homo, who uh, talked about uh, uh, the impact of the pandemic period uh, onto architecture, public spaces, private spaces, and how we use the city in a different way. Uh, so, we invite you to take a look to our magazine, our magazine being also an academic magazine in uh, the only University of Architecture and Urbanism, uh, had the strategy of uh, of uh, having the uh, full content online. So, uh, please uh, uh, come uh, and uh, check uh, the content, and if you are in Venice, also uh, on this uh, main uh, uh, 
historic part of the city get uh, into the exhibition. I'm going to pass the, the microphone now to Gruya to say a few words. Thank you, Gruya, for being here with us. Thank you very much for the for the invitation, and thank you very much for for this wonderful launch. I had the pleasure of, of, of reading through, uh, through the, the magazine, and it's full of very inspiring ideas, very different takes on the connection between architecture and migration. Maybe to talk a bit about how I'm my vantage point, kind of a double hat. One is of a Humboldt fellow researching the way architects react to uh, migration, particularly in a European setting. But also, I'm myself a transnational academic working between countries and thinking um, thinking about different place-making strategies, but also about how to make sense of my own journey. So reading this uh, this very rich collection, which I, inspire, which I recommend you to all uh, have a look at, um, I was thinking of also of a number of, of, uh, of projects that in the last decades or so really tried to um, to highlight how architects can actually deal with this uh, increasing diversity. We're talking about, about super diverse cities. In fact, one architect, Suzanne Hall, uh, originally from South Africa, who went to, uh, to London, uh, um, at one point started getting fascinated by the, by the nitty-gritty urban fabric of, of, of London in the sense of the social fabric of the, of the interaction of all these groups. And she dedicated her life in, in the last decade in, in documenting the, how this super diversity, as she calls it, transforms the city. And this is the moment when, when architects start asking questions about the social and they, when they do the bridge is when um, a lot of provocations and also and also imaginaries and, and, and also solutions are coming. One such solution, for instance, is what happened in, in Copenhagen in an area called Nürebro, an area that was considered to be difficult uh, by uh, Danish standards, uh, in, in which is about um, 50 different groups, I mean, people diasporic groups uh, uh, coming from different countries where we're living. And there was a, a large public space there called Super Pilen, which um, attracted the attention of um, uh, the lo local authorities, invited um, a number of architects from uh, urban, urban designers from Denmark and, and, and Germany. And what happened with this, I just want to highlight this example, the way that architects worked with uh, different, uh, different representatives of these communities to ask them to to co-produce the space by selecting objects that will remind them somehow of their of their home, um, their home country. For instance, from uh, from Romania, uh, what was selected was um, um, stools, chairs, and uh, uh, like uh, Bancuzzi's um, famous uh, table of silence, which are placed around the park together with the Islamic Moroccan fountains or various other elements in different countries. So somehow. This was touted as an example of co-production and, and also how architects can actually work with different communities to express its super diversity. But the questions also remain, is that, is that enough? How do we, who do we talk to? How do we select the, uh, the, these interlocutors? The bridge between social and the spatial is still at the beginning, so we have to think um, sometimes harder than, than just finding tokens from different, from, from different cultures. It's what, is, what is definitely the case is that cities in the West of Europe, and not only, are becoming increasingly diverse. And this is, these are questions that, uh, uh, from, um, of course, up to 2015, cities like Barcelona, for instance, have, have also put a lot of attention in, in the way that cities can respond to architecture and their public spaces also to, uh, to different living conditions and different diversities. What happens in, um, in our part of Europe, in Central Eastern Europe, where a lot of people are leaving, on the one hand, brings different challenges, and this is why I, I recommend you to go to the exhibit on uh, shrinking cities part of the pavilion. But also, again, the question of new diversity is uh, coming there. Just to, to wrap up, architects have been thinking about these things. Uh, the social is, has been um, has been quite a, quite a question for, for a while, so I recommend you to get inspired by reading uh, some of these accounts uh, and uh, continue the conversation, to allow the conversation further. So, Thank you very much, and I will pass this time. Well, hello. Uh, here we are at the seventh edition of Not of Europe. It's been a long time. Um, I was thinking how long the time passed with, uh, from the first uh, number. And um, um, during the process of editing this magazine, um, reading again and again the answers of our uh, contributors, I was 
actually impressed by the fact that uh, they all have a very, very different uh, approach to the subject that we propose. Um, and uh, the most uh, that I liked is that uh, some of the architects that responded uh, identified themselves as migrants and uh, put themselves in the position of uh, the ones that are uh, um, finding new places, new cultures, and new architectures. And I think uh, I, I drew myself a few conclusions during uh, this process. Um, I think that on the, the other, on, on one hand, the, the influence of migration has always been present in the architecture because uh, we are talking about like uh, this, about exactly this specific position of the architects that are. Um, um, visiting other countries, like uh, when you are uh, receiving the Rome Prize and you are visiting Italy, for instance, and uh, Le Corbusier and the others and all of them that have studied Italy and that influenced their work afterwards. And on the other side, I think that uh, the architects responded uh, to the request of the society and I have a very good example uh, just from here, from Venice. Um, I recently found out from a professor of uh, University in Bucharest that uh, here in Venice, just a few walk, uh, a few minutes walk from here, is this uh, neighborhood, the uh, ghetto, that is actually a very special uh, place in Venice, like uh, because. Um, Jew society is living there from uh, for many years. Uh, they um, um, adapted to the local architecture and actually uh, to the constraints of the city. And uh, the consequences of their migration was translated in a more de uh, dense uh, architecture. It is actually a characteristic of the architecture that is not uh, visible at the first time. You can see it from the public space. And uh, though it is a very important consequence in the transformation of building the houses. And um, that, that uh, was the main idea that I wanted to say, that this influence uh, has always been there, even though it's not so visible. And so uh, I think uh, in the future it will be in the same manner. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, as a closing uh, word, uh, thinking to the super diversity uh, mentioned earlier, I, I would like to actually thank all our contributors uh, from this uh, 70 inch issue but also from the previous ones because uh, our uh, academic magazine format uh, means that we simply uh, approach uh, people who we admire these days we approach them online and they have uh, had the gener generosity of answering us and uh, this uh, also uh, amplifies this uh, super diversity uh, on a different uh, level so, uh, thank you everybody for being here, uh, and uh, we'll meet again in Venice, in Bucharest maybe, and uh, meet you at the uh, 8th. Thank you, Gruya, thank you, Stefania.